Welcome to Mikon's hardware. Unfortunately, due to the giant human malware, all my AliExpress packages have stuck somewhere between China and Europe. Still, I'm trying to find some interesting pieces of hardware to make videos and review them for you. This time I have got Asus Z10P8D8 motherboard, which was on sale on eBay. Maybe by the time this video goes live, the sale will still be available and if you will be interested, you could buy one for 100 euros. This motherboard has two sockets for Intel LJ2011 version 3 Xeon CPUs. That is why it will be interesting to compare it to Tinsha X99 Duo. Before I go to the detailed specification of the motherboard, I would like to say a few words. First of all, I was excited to get this Asus motherboard for just 100 euros. And I felt like, okay, now finally I have got a branded dual socket motherboard, which shall be much better than no-name Chinese Tinsha X99 Duo. In reality though, the first motherboard I have received was completely dead. No matter which CPU I try to use, no matter which RAM, no matter which power supply, whatever I do, the motherboard failed to indicate at least a single postcode. After a while, I gave up and contacted the seller. The seller didn't even want to bother with this problem and just asked me if I would be okay if he sends me a replacement. I said yes, and I have received another motherboard. Identical motherboard, identical packaging, but the second one works well. This indicates that they have a very high amount of defective motherboards and they do not want to spend time and resources for validating which motherboard is working, which motherboard is not working. They just send out whatever they have and if someone complains, they send a replacement. The other downside is that the motherboard comes without IO shield. It is possible to order IO shield from China for about 4 to 5 euros, which is a good deal. Unfortunately though, due to the human malware factor, I had to buy the IO shield from Netherlands, which costed me about 22 euros. One more thing I was unhappy is the motherboard state. Used motherboards are used motherboards. When I have received my Tinsha X99 Dual and packing it, touching it with my hands, it was a pleasure. The motherboard was new, it looked nice, it felt fresh. This motherboard came with no packaging, quite dirty, and I didn't feel any excitement or joy to work with this motherboard. For those who wants to get full and detailed specification, link to the official ASUS page will be in the video description. Feel free to follow up and read up all yourself. The full name of the motherboard is ASUS Z10P8-D8. The motherboard has two sockets for Intel LJ2011 version 3 CPUs. For dual socket configuration, you have to use Xeon E5 2600 series or 4600 series CPUs. You can also use 1600 series CPUs, but only one CPU is supported in this case. The motherboard uses server Intel C612 chipset. It has 4 DDR4 DIMMs for each CPU, for total of 8 DIMMs. Unfortunately, the motherboard does not support desktop memory, and you have to install registered ECC memory sticks on this motherboard. On the back side of the motherboard, there are 2 USB 2 ports, 2 USB 3 ports, PS2 port, VGA port, three network ports. Two of these are network controllers and one is network management port. On the motherboard itself you will find 10 SATA 3 ports, 8 4 pin fan headers, 2 PCI Express X16 slots, 4 PCI Express X4 slots, 1 M.2 slot. Unfortunately, the M.2 slot is placed very badly and the physical dimension of the SSD drives is limited to type 2242. The official page specifies that supported capacity of the SSD drives is between 16 and 128 GB. It is not true. I have plugged there my Samsung NVMe drive with capacity of 500 GB and it worked well. Of course, it was sticking out from the motherboard, but it does not prevent it from work. So every drive with a physical dimension of type 2242 with any capacity will be fine on this motherboard. Onboard VGA adapter is represented by SPEED AST2400 with 32 MB of video memory. Unlike Tinsha X99 Dual, this motherboard is a standard ATX form factor. Unfortunately, the motherboard does not have onboard audio, and if you need audio output for your front panel or 3.5mm headphones, you would have to add an external audio adapter. Now let me finish my non-technical discussions and move straight to the test results. The same as Tinsha X99 Dual, Asus Z10P8 D8 does not support Windows Sleep Mode. The feature is not available in the BIOS and it's not possible to activate it in Windows. 
On the other hand, Linux is supported, booting from NVMe drive is also supported. It's important to mention that I had to update BIOS to the latest version provided by ASUS. Without that, the motherboard failed to post as soon as I plug Samsung NVMe drive either through PCI Express X4 extension card or straight to the M.2 slot. What is even more disappointing is that the RAM timings options are hidden in the BIOS. I have checked the BIOS using Amip CP tool and the RAM timings configurations are there. Still, in the BIOS UI, this option is hidden and you won't be able to configure your memory timings out of the box. From the positive side is the VRM thermal performance. Testing two Turbo Boost unlocked Xeon E5 2650V3 using Prime95 for one hour, VRM zone temperature tested with my external thermometer was about 55 to 70 degrees Celsius. Even though the heat sink on the motherboard is quite small and I did not have any airflow during the test, the temperatures were very good. 70 degrees Celsius is very safe. Unfortunately, not a single motherboard temperature sensor is displaying actual temperatures in Windows. At least hardware monitor is displaying some static values. For the extra notes I can say that the BIOS is locked and write protected. FPT or flash programming tool does not work. Afu Win and Afu DOS did not work for me either. Trying to flash modified BIOS using the official ASUS tool also did not result in a success. That is why I had to use my external USB flash programmer, in this particular case it's CH314A, to flash modified BIOS for Turbo Boost Unlock. I have tested ASUS Z10 P8D8 with the two Xeon E5 2650V3 CPUs. Maximum memory speed is DDR4-2133. Yes, even on the ASUS motherboard it's not possible to increase the memory speed above the Intel specification. Turbo Boost works, I would be very surprised if the branded motherboard would not properly work with the default specification of Intel Turbo Boost technology. The following RAM configurations were tested. 8 sticks, 8GB each, DDR4-2133, registered DCC memory for 64GB in total in octo-channel configuration. 64GB with 2 sticks, 32GB each, DDR4-2400, ECC registered memory sticks for dual-channel configuration, 1 channel per CPU. And the last configuration, 128GB of RAM, 4 sticks, 32GB each, DDR4-2400, registered ECC memory. As I have mentioned in the specification of the motherboard, it does not support desktop non-registered non-ECC memory. I have tested that and that's true. The motherboard failed to boot with my Corsair desktop memory modules. Now let's talk about Turbo Boost Unlock. After all the struggles with writing customized BIOS onto the motherboard, I gave up using any programs and just flushed the BIOS using my external programmer. Here are the results. Turbo Boost Unlock works with manual EFI driver installation. So I take the default ASUS BIOS, cut out the CPU microcodes 06F2, flush it onto the motherboard, and then use the well known procedure to manually install EFI driver for Turbo Boost Unlock. This works. Unfortunately, trying to inject FFS drivers into the BIOS did not work for me. Maybe this is something wrong with this particular motherboard and with this particular BIOS. Or maybe there was something wrong in the BIOS settings. But I have tried to find out why it's not working, and with the limited amount of time I have with this motherboard, I was not able to find a solution. If I try to inject Payne FFS drivers into the BIOS, the BIOS works, but Turbo Boost Unlock does not work. CPU does not properly Turbo Boost itself. If I try to inject Turbo Boost drivers from Anantech user called MOF or MOF, the system fails to boot. Postcode indicator on the motherboard displays 4F, which means DXE, initial program load. So something is wrong and ASUS z 10 p 8 d 8 refuses to load FFS driver from MOF. The latest version of the original ASUS BIOS has a feature called ASUS Turbo Ratio Lock, or shortly ATRL. Unfortunately, this feature is not locking the CPU at the maximum turbo boost frequency, it's locking the CPU at maximum turbo boost frequency on all CPU cores. For Xeon E5 2650V3, this is 2.6 GHz. Thus, instead of turbo boosting up to 3 GHz, the CPU is locked at 2.6 GHz and does not change its frequency when the load is going up and down. It is very disappointing, but it is what it is. I think this is enough information to make a conclusion regarding this motherboard. 
Right now, if you're lucky, you can find it on eBay for 100 to 150 euros, but usually the motherboards are being sold for around 300 euros. From the pros, I can say that it's dual CPU design, 512GB of RAM officially supported, it's a known brand, 8 memory channels, onboard VGA and 3 LAN ports, 2 are network ports and 1 is network management port. From the cons, we have no memory timings configuration, locked BIOS, does not support regular desktop memory modules, broken temperature sensors, Windows sleep mode is not supported, there is no onboard audio, half-sized M.2 slot means you will not be able to install normal-sized M.2 drives. Two RAM slots are way too close to the CPU socket, but I don't think it's possible to have any more space there on the ATX form factor. My score for the motherboard would be 6 out of 10, the same as for Tincha X99 Dual. The link to the eBay shop where I bought the motherboard will be provided in the video description. Before I wrap up this video, let's take a short comparison between Tinsha X99 Dual and Asus ZTEM P8D8. Tinsha X99 Dual has the following pros. It's a new motherboard. It has RAM timings configuration out of the box. It is easy to perform Turbo Boost Unlock because the BIOS is not locked and you can flush whichever BIOS you wish. The motherboard has onboard audio adapter. M.2 slot is also full-sized, so you can install there basically any M.2 drive. The motherboard supports all kind of memory modules, which includes regular, unbuffered, non-ECC, non-registered desktop memory, as well as ECC but not registered memory, and finally ECC registered memory. For the cons, we have just one PCI Express X16 slot, unknown brand, which means you will not get any kind of support, what is more important for those who are running many servers in racks that the motherboard does not have feature to restore its power state on power loss and it also lacks quite a few features for the remote management. The last thing I could nitpick on Tinsha X99 Dual is very few fan headers. Moving to Asus ZTEM P8D8, we have the following picture. For the pros we have Asus brand, many PCI Express slots, Lots of server features for remote management and whatever else. Many fan headers, ATX size. It's slightly smaller than Tinsha X99 Dual and will fit in basically any ATX case. On the cons we have no RAM timings configuration, locked BIOS, Turbo Boost Unlock is only working with the manual EFI driver installation, no onboard audio, half-sized M.2 slot, which means you cannot just buy a regular M.2 drive and install it onto the motherboard. Very long booting time is probably okay if you use the motherboard for a 24-7 server, but it's very annoying if you would use it for a workstation which has to be turned on and off quite frequently. And finally, no support for the regular desktop memory modules. You have to install server registered ECC DDR4 memory modules on this motherboard to make it work. In short, I would say that if you're looking for a server to run a 24-7 and have remote management features, go for ASUS. In other cases, Tinsha X99 Dual is a better option. The other reason to consider ASUS Z10 P8D8 would be if you need many expansion cards. Unfortunately, Tinsha X99 Dual has just one PCI Express X16 slot. Let's hope that in the near future, Chinese will release an updated version of DualSocket LGA2011 version 3 motherboard with a few extra PCI Express expansion slots. That probably will be the ultimate go-to motherboard for those who want to build a powerful workstation using two Xeon E5 2678 or similar CPUs. But for now, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.